What's up, Harmony men? Uh, ben here. It's Wednesday night. I'm uh, front porch rocking and wanted to come to you with just a few minutes um, of something that you can chew on this week when it comes to God's Word. So I want to ask you this question. What is the greatest adventure that you've ever had in your life? What is the greatest adventure that you've ever had in your life? See, I know it's going to be tough to share that uh, on a group like we're uh, doing now and on a video, but here's what I want to ask you to do. At the end of this video, if you watch it and you have a picture of that adventure, will you share it to our Harmony Men's Facebook page? That'll uh, be a way that we can interact with each other. When I think about my greatest uh, adventure, I, I think about a story that uh, Kara and I, uh, an adventure that we took several years ago. So you may not know this about me, but I hate heights. I'm afraid of heights, whatever you want to call it. But Kara loves uh, the thrill and loves to thrill seek. So one day she asked to go zip lining. So being a good husband, and I'm, I'm sure you guys who are listening are all good men. So being a good man, I, I thought I would so, uh, suck it up and, and we're going to go zip lining. So I spent the money, got the tickets, and off we went. I can still remember climbing up the tower to the very tip top and feeling like I was miles above the ground, although it, it wasn't that far, and, and taking that first zip line to the first podium and waiting there for our other group to get there. It just seemed like that pedestal that we were on in the middle of the air got smaller and smaller as folks uh, zip lined their way and joined. And I can still remember the thunderstorm that hit that night. You see, not only do I, I hate heights, but in the middle of zip lining on the top of a podium, a thunderstorm came. And, and here was the conversation with our guides. They were trying to figure out how they would uh, lower us down, belay us down to the ground if lightning struck it uh, right around us. See, that was my adventure. I hated it. My first and last zip lining experience. But tonight I want to talk to you real quick about the adventure that God has called uh, us to take. In uh, Matthew chapter 9, Jesus talks that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the harvest that he may send out workers. Guys, that's you and me. In Matthew chapter 10, just right after Jesus said that statement, he called his first 12 disciples. And when he called them, I'm, I want to tell you what he asked them to do. I'm going to read it now in Matthew 10, 7 through 8. It says, as you go, as they were sent, he wanted them to proclaim this message, that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely you will give. See, Jesus' call to the disciples was real similar to what he told people his own mission was. See, Jesus was on a great adventure himself. In John chapter 3, verse 16, we know that God sent his son. That was the adventure that Jesus came on, the adventure to, to bring salvation and restoration of our souls, to make a way for us to be made right with God. But in Luke chapter 4, Jesus says this, uh, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me to do these things, to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim that freedom is there for prisoners, to give recovery of sight for blind, that the oppressed will be set free, and to proclaim that the year of the Lord's favor is here. See, Jesus tonight, guys, is calling us on a great adventure. And I believe those same things that Jesus said in Luke chapter 4 that he was about, we as men of harmony can be about tonight. The first thing that's so important, Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Guys, there's nothing that we're going to do at harmony that is going to be done in our own strength that's worth anything. You see, if we're going to experience what we know God has called us to do, if we're going to experience what Patrick talked about uh, on Sunday, like 500, no, multiply it by 100, and then you have a God-sized goal, if we're going to experience a gospel reach of 50,000 people, then we're going to have the Holy Spirit, have to have the Holy Spirit's backing. We're going to have to have the Holy Spirit doing what only He can do. Oswald Chambers said this, the Spirit is the first power that we practically experience. So we get the Holy Spirit at salvation, but it's the last power that we come to understand. Folks, we don't understand how the Holy Spirit works, but we understand this, that he brings power. And if we're going to make disciples of all people in all places to the glory of God, did you catch that? All people 
all places to the glory of God. Little old Edgemore, if we're going to do that, then we have to have the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Men of God, you have the Holy Spirit with you. So let's go on an adventure. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. And what did Jesus say he came to do? It's the same stuff that we came to do. Preach the good news to the poor. That word poor means without, but in that context, the word poor actually can be better understood this. It's almost like shirking away, like a, a beggar who's in a corner in a shadow. That's that word poor. See, a beggar that was so scared to even come out and let you see his face. See, we need to bring the gospel to those who feel like they're not worthy. Bring the gospel to folks who, who feel like they can't even see the light of day, that they're not clean enough to come to God. Have you ever heard that? Those are the men and women that we need to bring the gospel to. Bring the gospel to the poor. Proclaim to the captives that they can be set free. You see, Satan, the great enemy, has men and women, boys and girls, has people in our community held captive. Captive because of poor decisions, captive because of moral failures, captive because of addictions, captive because of sin. You see, he has folks held captive, and Jesus came to bring freedom. Maybe even as guys in our, our Harmony group, you're struggling with an addiction or a sin. You're struggling with something that you're just having a hard time shaking. Let me tell you this, that Jesus came to bring freedom. He came to bring freedom. He can do that for us tonight. What's the third thing that he said? Recovery for the sight, uh, sight for the blind. Jeremiah said there's people who walk around with eyes, but yet they do not see. They stumble around in darkness. Men tonight, be the light. Be the light. Bring the light of the gospel in your interactions this week. And the fourth thing and the last thing real quick that Jesus came to do that I think we as men of God, men of harmony, should come to do tonight is this, set the oppressed free. Now more than ever, there's people who are walking around and they're overwhelmed and they're burdened by what's going on in our society right now. With the coronavirus, there's folks who are asking questions and they feel just overwhelmed and they don't know which way to turn. Jesus said this. I love this verse. He says this, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, all who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus said that he and he alone will give rest. So when we come in contact with those folks who are oppressed, that are heavy laden, that are burdened, let's bring them Jesus. Guys, I just want to tell you I appreciate you and uh, appreciate you tuning in. And if you would, let's take advantage of that Facebook page where Harmony Men are going to be gathered. Use that in the coming weeks to be able to share scripture, prayer requests, things that are going on in life, and let's stay connected. May God bless you and uh, look forward to talking to you next week.